Hello everyone. So today I am just going to a brief information about the protein structure and conformational space. And that's a really my area of interest. So I just go through a more detail. So this is the beginner work. If you are good enough to get information, then I will just make somebody stronger one and make it an intermediate course and then advanced course. So this is the first course. So that is just up to you. What is the protein structure and what is the conformational space? <clears throat> so these are the some points which I will cover. And what is the principal structure of the protein? So everyone knows that from the, suppose the eukaryotic cell or prokaryotic cell, any cell, from DNA to RNA, RNA to protein, I am expecting that everyone have to have at least this information from transcription from DNA to RNA and from RNA to protein for the translation. So ultimately protein is formed. And usually protein is a functional unit and functional structure. So most of the work are the based on the protein structure. So usually most of the life science research is related with protein science and uh, that's important. So it uh, really is an essential need that have to have information about what are the structure and how are the things Later with protein structure. So I will cover these steps. So first is the amino acid. So proteins are made from the amino acid. The same thing, suppose this room or such types of prepared from the brick. So brick or such types of, that is a functional unit because without brick and without fan, it's not the room. The same thing, every brick they have to prepare, that is a functional unit. So every brick is a for the protein structure is its amino acid. And only 20 amino acids are found. Two or three are exceptional. These are just recent research. But at least for the, for the beginner level, <coughs> only 20 amino acids are important. And 20 amino acids, among 20, 20 amino acids, 10 amino acids are essential amino acids and 10 amino acids are non-essential. But both are important. You don't have to make confusion that what are the important and essential. Essential means, for a, for a, suppose if you would like to make a protein structure, so all 20 amino acids are in need to make a protein structure. But among, ten, among them, 10 you have to take from outside from, from by food or such type of things. And the 10 amino acids you have to prepare from your body. Body itself prepared. So ultimately 10 amino acid which are in need are essential amino acid and 10 amino acid which all body are automatically have to prepare so that are non-essential but both are important okay <clears throat> so when you just go through amino acids so amino acid look like a type of structure one end is n terminal one end is c terminal so suppose this is the n terminal and this is the c terminal and from N terminal is called because is the NH2 group is free and C terminal is called because the CWH group is free. So N terminal and C terminal and among them that is a group, side chain group. For suppose CS3, so is a LN in amino acid, that is an example. But suppose the histidine, so glycine amino acid and some other other thing. So only an NH2 group and CWH groups are common. And rest CS3 group, valine group, or subtype, everything changes. So <clears throat> for amino acid, you have to say that these two are the constant region, and this one is the this side chain CS3 group here. Is a uh, particular this is a, a LNA amino acid. <coughs> sorry. <laughs> so sorry. So <clears throat> Suppose if some other amino acid, some other amino acid, different number, so these side chains only changes. Rest NH2 group and CS3 group, both are the CCWH group are the same. Okay. Suppose here this one is CWO minus and NH2, NH2 plus one. Is uh, you you may just go through and you just get information that C and N plus C N plus H3 and CWH CWO minus. <clears throat> this is the common in every amino acid. And rest of the, the region covered by the red box or red region are so the side chains which are changes in different amino acids. Suppose serine, 
that is CS two OH, threonine, CS three CHOH, and such type of cysteines, CS two SH, glycine H. So such type of thing, these are changes. But COOH and NH two because this is the interaction, so they have to say CWO minus and NH three uh, NH three plus. I will just go through in the next slide. But there's thing. So these are the, some aromatic amino acids because we are been gene ring and such type of aromatic group are involved. So this is called aromatic amino acid. So these are three uh, aromatic amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. <coughs> so these are negative charge amino acids. This is aspartate and glutamate. And a positive charge amino acid, lysine, arginine, and histidine. So these are the just go through. Okay. Uh, now the important thing, if you have to make interaction, suppose like suppose if in a house you have to make a structure of a house, so one one brick bind with another brick, another brick, another brick. So such type of thing, you have to create a whole body, whole structure, whole house. So same thing, one brick is one amino acid, another brick is another amino acid, another brick is another acid, but they have to bound with each other, and in this fashion they have to just liberate one water molecule. So ultimately, an H two group. One of the H from NH two and OH from the CWH. They just make interaction and just liberate some energy in the form of water molecule H two O, and then make a bond form. And this form bond is called peptide bond. So one amino acid and another amino acid, if they just interact with each other, so they are definitely one a bond, and the bond will form from the H of the NH two group and OH from the CWH group. So ultimately, one OH H two molecule liberated out, and the energy is also released. Ultimately, one bond is formed. Okay, <clears throat> is a hybridization suppose sigma bond or pi bond? I think you know, but okay, <clears throat> I think uh, <coughs> here I also have to just in, just illustrate what are the things, how the bond will form. Uh, suppose what is the S orbital, P orbital, D orbital, F orbital. If you know, so it's okay. But otherwise, I have to just say what is it. Suppose if a positive charge proton. Suppose this uh, fist is uh, related with positive charge proton. So suppose two hydrogen. So two proton molecule there. So ultimately, two electron will revolve over there. So suppose two hydrogen here and one electron. So one electron is just going through. One electron is just going through from here to here. So ultimately, what happened? So proton molecule just in uh, just uh, attract electron molecule, and so just like if if you have to just bind some uh, some stone with a string and just pull light. So so just so just like that, the electron mo molecule move around that. Now the second molecule, second electron molecule comes. So it also move around the same plane, but this both these two electrons have to repel each other, so they are just moving in the opposite direction. One electron is moving in this direction, opposite another electron moving in the other direction. And in that fashion, they have to just cover whole space. So suppose if this is proton, and one electron is moving like that, and one electron is moving like that. So two electron. Up now you just think that particular now it has a ten electron, ten proton. So third electron will come. Third electron will come. And now is also want uh, <coughs> yeah, so want to move on the same surface, but these two electron, which are on the which are in the which, the first and second electron, they just repel this third electron. And when this both electron, the first and second electron, on the opposite orientation, but cross on the same portion, so particular in this region, <coughs> this electron have higher intensity to repel the third electron. So ultimately, the third electron is not moving rounded fashion; is moving in the cylindrical fashion, like this one. And the third electron is like move in this fashion. The fourth electron is also cover the same surface area, but in the opposite direction. Now the fourth electron, okay, the five fifth electron in the. So ultimately, they just go through and have to increase. So what is it? Suppose one is two is. Spherical, because every electron wants to in the spherical surface, lowest energy level. When but when third electron comes, it also wants to move in the sur uh, uh, spherical surface. 
but these two electron which are the first one electron and second electron they just repel in particular one one region <coughs> and ultimately they are not in this pair they are cylindrical so this is third electron fourth electron also in the same plane but in the opposite direction fifth electron also cover the second cylindrical region so third cylindrical region so ultimately the when this is the first orbital is s orbital then p orbital the p orbital is just above the s orbital but after six electron they the whole area of the p orbital is covered now the suppose two two electron here and two to six ten electron if cover then 11 electron occur in the d orbital because whole p orbital is covered from one okay same from the s orbital covered by two electron whole area is covered by s electron two or to s orbital at the same the p orbital is covered from whole six electron so ultimately i was thinking that you can understand so by this way the electron make interaction and one water molecule is liberated out so an s2 group uh, hydrogen from an s2 and oh from the other so liberated out and liberated one bond form and particular in this case protein case one peptide is formed in between two amino acid <laughs> <clears throat> so now other thing is very important you just have to get information what is the psi angle and phi angle so suppose if this is a plane surface this is shown in the gray region or something region suppose four area suppose this four area are covered here so now this one is suppose this one is plane surface and now this one is plane surface plane surface means this plane surface is suppose one is carbon is here one uh, hydrogen is here one oxygen is here and one carbon is here and now here is a n and c bond so same surface same surface but what will happen they are just oriented in different orientation so ultimately if this c and c make a rotation so the angle between is called psi and if c and ang and n what is the angle between them so it's called phi so that's why you can learn by the cc suppose c and you have to just by separate uh, intercept so cc between c and c is the side just for remembering otherwise c and c if you have some angle between them is called c psi and c and n is called phi but these are depend on how suppose if these are the glycine 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 so apparently c and c angle between and c and n angle between from every one it will be the same because the side chain is hydrogen atom but but because hydrogen atom i saw a hydrogen atom because one is so only s orbital so it is not covered too much area <clears throat> but suppose if ch3 orbital suppose some tryptophan or phenylene some benzene ring some bulky group so ultimately what will happen if bulky group be have, will be here so they cover the area and ultimately for this area the distance between or angle between the c and c and c and n will be changes so on the basis of the side change the different angle between c and c and c and n are change and ultimately what is the minus 90 because anything which is because these are the two planes they can move from the 90 degree and 180 degree so ultimately minus 190 minus 180 to plus 180 are the maximum orientation and that all depend upon the side chain if all side chains are same so phi angle and psi angle will be the same but only the side chains are based on the basis of the so, okay sorry side chains are decided uh, side chain will be decide the distance between uh, the orientation between two amino acid <coughs> so i expect that you can understand what exactly i have to say the so same things <clears throat> suppose this orientation this orientation ultimately this, 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 this different type of orientation and ultimately what is the peptide will form suppose if 8 or 10 or something some, some small amino acid 6 7 8 amino acid so it's called peptide if large one so it's called protein i will just go through in detail now what is the primary structure primary structure suppose if you have a thread okay suppose like a white thread so something something like that if you have a white thread suppose protein structure 
if you just pick one terminal that is the n terminal which is free and the c terminal which is definitely should be free because among them all the hydrogen bond what hydrogen bond means or not hydrogen bond this peptide bond sorry so if one take one n terminal and one c terminal and stretch it out suppose this one this this one is this is the n sorry here <laughs> because i am the mirror no? okay so suppose this one is n terminal and this is the t, t c terminal and this is the thread if you want to stretch as much as possible just an example so this structure is called primary structure for a protein if it one n terminal is stretch in maximum extent and c terminal is maximum extent so that structure is called primary structure only amino six and the peptide one now you suppose if you just because they definitely have some tensile strength if you just uh, remove this if you just remove it then they make it some structure they some like make like some secondary structure so secondary structure is called suppose, suppose secondary structure, suppose if they like look like a helix so secondary structure sub c so secondary structure but here in this case of the protein what are the secondary structure <coughs> more or less the same thing but secondary structure suppose as you just go through the every fourth hydrogen they make some hydrogen bond in the secondary structure from the helix so suppose if this one in the this is the second this third fourth five suppose if one bind with fourth second bind with fifth third bind with six seventh bind with eight so one four two five Three, six, four, seven. So if they just like it, so they like a spring-like structure. So that's a secondary structure, and that's a secondary structure which comes because they have a bond between every fourth hydrogen, every fourth amino acid by hydrogen bonding. So this is the way by which the secondary structure helical form is formed. If the helix is formed, so it's called alpha helix. Just a name because the Greek name. So usually they have to say alpha is the first one. <clears throat> so if helix bond, I think uh, I'm, I'm expecting I can uh, try to convince you what exactly. So first to fourth, second to fifth, third to sixth, and so ultimately they just like spring-like structure. So that is secondary structure, and that is a helical form. Then <coughs> suppose if one is one amino acid bind with the next suppose fifteenth amino acid, second with sixteenth amino acid, third with seventeenth amino acid. Fourth with eighteen amino acid. So if this type of structure bond will form between hydrogen bond, so they like a seat, one one, and then just come seat. So if these amino acid are in the same orientation, so it's called uh, polar. If they are opposite, so is the anti polar. So polar uh, uh, beta seat and anti polar beta seat. Now what is the tertiary structure and quaternary structure? Tertiary structure is suppose <coughs> if you just make some forces. Like a suppose because in the amino acid, cysteine is also amino acid because they they have a such group they form disulfide. So suppose one uh, fourth amino acid and sixteenth amino acid they make disulfide. So some bonded with if they cover so such bond make the protein more stable. So these are the secondary structure. Uh, sorry, these are the tertiary structure. Some other bond is involved. If only peptide bonds are primary structure, if hydrogen bond also, so it's secondary structure. If third bond, suppose disulfide and some water bond, some other bond, so it's a second tertiary structure. And if suppose one, two, three tertiary structure interact with each other, so it's called quaternary structure.